Hey guys, what's happening? Willie here at The Great Outdoors. Hey, today I have something very special that I want to talk about, and it's people. That's right, people are very special. Sometimes in more ways than one. Anyway, I've been doing YouTube now for going on three years, I believe, or maybe even past three years. I don't know. That's how long I've been doing it. I've done so many videos that some of them I can't remember. Some of them I'm happy that I can't remember. Some of them I wish I could forget. But for the most part, everybody that I have met doing YouTube, whether it be the Honda Monkey, whether it be fishing reels, whether it be camping, whatever it may be, have been great and wonderful people. And I'm going to talk to you today about another couple of wonderful people. That's right. Harry Howard and his wife, Sophia, live in New Mexico. Now, Harry contacted me some time back and has been watching my videos and commenting and and he contacted me about some reels that he had one in particular which i didn't know anything about and i said you know what it'd probably be better to talk to someone who knows more about it and i sent him to dan uh who is really more and this is a shakespeare reel who was more in that world well even dan was rather stumped by this particular reel so Harry contacted me back again and said, you know, Willie, I'd really like for you to have these reels. And I'm like, I'm dumbfounded. When people want to give you things, I, I, just, I just get baffled and dumbfounded by that because I didn't come from a world of uh, people just going, here, take this, unless it was something they absolutely 100% 100 didn't, 100 did not want. But because of YouTube and because of the fishing and the reels and all that stuff, I've had more contact with people that are incredibly giving souls with, when it comes down to the fishing. and It's just a great group of people to be mixed in with, uh, specifically the vintage fishing reels. But Harry got with me, and uh, him and I talked. He emailed me. We talked back and forth. He sent me some pictures of the reels, and Lord and behold, or... Willie and behold this box. He mailed me this box with some reels in it. Now, I've had this box since yesterday evening and I have been dying to dig into this thing, but I wanted to hold off because it was late yesterday evening and I said, I don't want to start, start a video and not be able to finish it all at the same time. And I waited till this morning. That's right, this morning, which is Sunday morning. And now we're no longer going to have to stare at it because Harry's box of reels is here and we're going to dig into this and I'm going to show you what Harry has sent me and before we even go any further I'm going to say Harry thank you very much you have no idea how much I appreciate this stuff we're going to dig into this one right now and uh, let's just see what Harry has sent me I'm going to give you the eyeballs down on the box here and we'll see what Harry has sent us there we go all right do I have a knife no but this screwdriver will do it, I'll guarantee it. It's from France. All right, so we have box open. Lots of bubble wrap. You gotta love bubble wrap. We're gonna go with what's in the bubble wrap first. What is this fancy guy? What is that? That's craziness. What is that thing? Let's take that out of the bag and take a good look at that. I don't know what this is. That is a Johnson Country Mile. Another reel I've never seen before. What year is this? CM100, Johnson Country Mile. Anybody ever seen one of these? I have not seen one. Uh, obviously, it's a newer style. Drag up top here, kind of... Uh, almost kind of Zebco-ish, I guess, in a way. And smaller teardrop style button. That's pretty darn cool. We're, we're definitely going to look into that guy. That's neat. Set that to the side here. And what else have we got hiding in here? Uh-oh. 
We've got a green reel, people. Close your eyes for those of you who don't want to see the green reel. We're going to look at it anyway. Wow. This is beautiful. There's not a scratch. There's not a scratch on this thing. Harry, what were you thinking? This is too nice for me. Shiny stuff scares me. Wow, look at that thing. That's gorgeous. 40th anniversary. I'm not kidding. This is a beautiful, beautiful reel. There's not a scratch on it. You had to have never used this. Let me look on the foot. There's nothing on the foot. There's no scratches on the foot. Made in the USA, because that's the 40th anniversary. Harry, you had to have never used this reel ever. We're going to have to catch a fish on this at least, Harry. I'm, I'm, it's going to have to happen. I'm hoping that's what you're wanting. Because <laughs> it's going to have to happen. This is such a beautiful reel. Man, that's nice. Oh, that just makes, makes my heart jump. Now, we're getting into that Shakespeare box. Let's see here. Let's move this big box out of the way. Because this 2602 model is the one that I believe neither, 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 neither Dan or myself had ever seen before. Closed face reel, built like a fine watch. Guarantee. Of course, it's in a different language. I don't, I don't know who's, who's guaranteeing this thing to me. All right, well, that's enough of the box. You know, I kind of, sometimes I have a fascination with boxes simply because there's so much information sometimes on the box that you just see stuff that's just cool. Wish I just could play a drum roll. Ooh! Wow. That is very... Very smooth is what that is. Has anybody ever seen one of these? The 2602 Shakespeare ceramic pickup pin stainless steel rotor. Your drag is a dial button here on the side, not, not a star. Definitely has an anti-reverse. Ceramic pickup pin stainless steel rotor. And this thing is working so easily. We've still got to look inside and take a look and see what let's let's just go ahead and do that right now. Let's take this line, let's take this line here off of the foot. Harry, I don't know how long the line's been on there, but we'll probably have to put okay, it's a quarter turn reel or bale, or I'm sorry, cap. Cap. Looks to be it's metal. We've got a little bit of a growl, but what might could just be grease. We're gonna take that apart and take a look at that. Kind of has that off-center uh button like um Oh, I don't know, similar to the 1700 2. You can see he's had this one on a, re on a rod. He's done some fishing. Let's just, uh, let's just get into this thing. Let's get a bowl here. Get a bowl right there. We'll put the cap is gorgeous. I, I'm going to clean it up. We don't even really have to do anything. Harry, I don't know if you've ever been into this thing before, or maybe you've always wanted to and didn't. I'm not sure. I'll tell you a little bit about Harry. Harry is also a musician, like myself. One of the things that we had in common. He had been playing for a very, very long time again. Okay, I see a little oil in here. Okay, inside the, the rotor we have a spring at the front, which is more like a leaf spring than a coil spring on a slide. That's very cool. And it is. it says it's stainless steel, so we don't have to worry about any rust issues. The rubber line grabber there seems to be a little dry, but we can put some stuff on that to help that out. We have a C-clip style pin here to get the spool off. And we're going to try to make that, again, not take flight. There we go. Set that there. And then our spool will come off. Okay, we have two pins on the inside and spool rests on those. I keep going too far. The spool rests on the two pins there. One is smaller than the other. We're going to get the line off of that, clean that up. Not that it really needs it all that much. This thing is moving so freely. I don't see a lot of having to, to, to do here, but we're going to take at least take this plate off. And I want to see the gearing and all of that stuff because this is just moving. I mean, that is so, so free. I mean, that is just unbelievable right there. So let's get these two screws off of here. Uh, there is a flathead or Phillips, whichever one you feel the need to use. I'm going to go 
flathead because I have it sitting here in front of me. Yep, that's that's pretty typical of what I would have expected in there. That is a C clip that holds holds the spring on. What I'm just astounded is how easy this thing turns. Now this is going to be um, probably going to be a two-piece. Let me look here. Yeah, it's a it's a two-piece crankshaft, meaning when you tighten down on this nut here, that's your drag, it's pulling tight on the center piece of the uh, crank gear and it pushes the two we've seen me take these be apart before it pushes together on the drag washers and that's that's what controls your drag if we're gonna do it we're gonna do the whole shebangy there we go and there is our little star washer right there we're gonna set that in here don't want to lose that that there there's our crank arm we'll put that over here for now now we got to get this little c-clip out without losing it. I'm trying to figure a place I can grab a hold of it. Okay. Mr. C-Clip, please don't go into orbit. Where do you need to come off at? Right there. So I will pull back on this. Oh, that spring has got some. The spring has got some spring to it. And that C-Clip, there we go. C-Clip's got some clip to it. Now we'll let go of the spring and the shaft will come all the way out. There we go. Oh, that's nice. That shaft actually has a, an oil kind of a reservoir there in the middle. We'll set that there. Okay, this gear has a flat side and then a side that protrudes out slightly. That protruding outside is the side that goes upward. So let's not forget that. Now we should be able to take, I say we should be able to take, but I guess we can't take. Can we not take? I guess not. I guess we have to unscrew this. Okay. There's something new. It's kind of like the star. You can't pull that out, I guess, until you take the star off. So we have our drag cap that just unscrews right off there. Under the drag cap, we have one of these little spring washers, they call them. It uh, just keeps tension what that does we'll put that in there now our gear should slide right out up inside there we have our little anti-reverse hook this is all very clean inside just, just oily and that's good because that means things are moving then we have the sleeve which has to spin inside there found that out the hard way with the reel that Dan had to tell me about then that gear that is your anti-reverse gear that needs to face counterclockwise. Teeth need to be counterclockwise. Okay, we got that? Really, all I'm going to have to do is wipe this thing down. That's all I need to do. Okay, well, that's a drag washer, but it looks like it's fine. I'm just going to wipe it down good. Let me grab some towels. We're going to wipe this thing down as good as we can. Lots of oil. Thank you, Harry, for keeping it good and the oil lubricated up there because this is going to make all the difference in the world when it comes to function. Because uh, I've said it before, I'll say it again, what takes most of the time is cleaning. So to be totally honest, it wasn't probably even necessary to have taken it apart, but I know people probably want to see what this crazy machine is. I'm going to have to look it up and try to figure out what it is because I have never seen one. Bushing is nice. Bushing doesn't have any particular way that it goes in. It can go in either way it looks like. Now this one's been used. I can I can tell he's used this one. You can see some marks just inside the gear where everything's been rubbing there. Which no problem. Nothing's it's not thin, let's put it that way. It's just got its little trail marks from the crank gear rubbing in it. So now we can commence to the rebuild process. And I don't mind overdoing this, believe me, and you may think, well, you're putting way too much in there. But that thing needs to be able to turn freely. There we go. There we go, spinning freely. Anti-reverse is anti-reversing. Got plenty of oil in there. Everything's doing what it should do. 
All right. Now, let's see if I remember this correctly. This guy here has to go on here. Now, we can screw our adjustment cap back on. Then, we can put our crank arm back on. All right. Maybe we'll put that back on there. Little star washer there. Then we need the nut here, which is enough oil on that shaft right now that should be good there. Then we're going to push that down through the oil, work it in a little bit. Then we're going to take it right, see where that recessed area is right there? I usually take it recessed area, put it about halfway in. Hey, I said halfway. That's enough oil. I mean, that thing was just sliding on in there without any issue whatsoever. Put a little oil in that recessed area after you push it halfway in. So that way when you push it in, you trap that oil in there. Remember this gear, this gear went in flat side first. And it has that protruding end because that way I believe it takes away having to have a washer there. Now we have to play the spring has sprung game. And we have to get this little C-clip Either I can push it on there with my fingers while trying to hold this entire thing, or we're gonna to have to use the needle noses. Yeah, did it with my fingers. Easy enough. That's the way I like it. Easy enough. All right, now we will put our button in. And now we'll work that. Everything's working good there. Drag is working there. We're spinning. Get a little bit of that grease up in there. Anti-reverse is anti-reversing. Now, we have to, before I can put the spool back on, I'm going to take that old line off there. I, I don't know when Harry put that line on there, so I'm going to take it off and put some other stuff on it. We're probably going to go back with a six-pound line for this, which kind of... Kind of feels like that's what that might be, but still got to clean that up. I'll be right back. Okay, we got the line off of there. Then your spool obviously only has one way it can go on. Then it clicks into place. Then you have your fancy dancy C-clip spring-loaded style that actually went on there easy enough with my fingers and didn't go under my fingernail and slice me open. Now we will push it up through there, put our rotor on, nut on top of the rotor, everything's working and our reverse is working, rotor is rotoring, retrieval pin is not retrievering but it is, uh, you know, it's there. Yes, it definitely saves time when you do not have to go and massively clean out corrosion and rust and dead spiders and all that kind of stuff, that's for sure. Man, I love this gold color. This thing is cool. Why do I not remember this reel? This was from my time frame. Why don't I remember this? It's got a few truck scratches on it. That's truck bed scratches right there. I guarantee it. Here I am. I'm doing that thing I love doing. Now, it says on the bottom of here, Japan. Okay, this, this Shakespeare is made in Japan. 2602. 2602. Not to be confused with the 2062, which is a very different reel. I can't even talk, really, because I, I just like looking at it. I like seeing it. I'm like, man, this thing's just neat. There was a movie once that Burt Reynolds was in called WW and the Dixie Dance Hall Kings or Dance Kings or something like that. And Burt Reynolds drove a black and gold anniversary edition Oldsmobile. This reel reminds me of that. That black and gold is just gorgeous. Man, that thing works great. I think I'm gonna have to call it Burt. What do you think? Everybody all right with that, Burt? Now, there is something very cool that I wanted to show you guys. Um, I was looking at the box. This is just amusing to me. Uh, the price tag that is on this 2602 closed face reel was $10.99. And it came from Canadian Tire on Rowden Street. I, the tag's kind of messed up there, so I can't tell. But it came from Canadian Tire. I, I don't know if y'all can read that or not. 
tag right there. It says Canadian Tire on Rowden Street or something like that. It's kind of messed up. But that's just, that's just funny to me. It came from a tire place. That's just cool. Now, the other thing I think is kind of funny. I'm going to try to show you this. This is the 2062, or 20, 2602. Let me get that right because I got 2062 on the brain. The 2602. Now, I want you to look at that picture. And look at this reel. What do you see there? What you see is two different things. You notice that the drag has a drag star. This has a drag like a little spinny knob. That has a drag star on it. It also, when you go to the back, you have the several different breakdown versions of these reels. On the breakdown version of the 2602 on the bottom, it even shows the star. That's pretty cool. Uh, they must have had a couple of different time frames or something. Because these are not numbered like, uh, you know, model, like Shakespeare does all their stuff. There's nothing like that on here, so there's no way to know time frame or year. This was printed in Japan, and it does not have, it doesn't have a date. There's no date anywhere. When giving spare part orders, it is sufficient to indicate the number of the spare part together with the item number of the reel. I don't know how you're going to do that when you go, hey, I've got a 2602, but it doesn't have the number part that you have in your, in your little thing here. <laughs> Let's see if there's a date on the box. Shakespeare Company, Fayetteville, Arkansas, manufactured to Shakespeare specifications in Japan. But I've got nothing on a date. There's nothing on the box anywhere, any kind of date of any kind. But I'm guessing that maybe they were made just for Canada. I don't know. I don't know. I really wish I could tell you, but I do not know. Put that back in the box. But that is just an incredibly cool reel, and I'm, I'm, I'm honored to have it. And I cannot wait to get out there and catch a fish with this thing. That's going to be fun. Really fun. And, of course, I have two more from Harry that uh, I could do. Um, I have decided that on the 40th anniversary, man, that thing works like, I'm not taking that apart. That's just gorgeous. I mean, I don't think that's ever been used. I'm actually texting Harry as we speak, and he said he's only used this one time. What else does he text me? What's going on here? He only used the 40th anniversary one time, and the Country Mile was bought locally where he lives there in New Mexico, which is another reel I don't recall ever seeing before. Um, this one seems to work okay. I can definitely hear there needs to be some taken apart there. Uh, this one's a little weird. And we have to figure out how that blue casing comes apart and how the drag functions up there. We'll figure that out. But that's going to be for another video so we don't wind up with a video that's two hours long. I know you guys like fishing reels. I get it. We just have to calm down here. Slow down. Harry, you and Sophia, thank you very much. I really appreciate this, the, giving me the uh, chance and the honor to own a few of your, your collection there and educating me teaching me, showing me something that uh, I've never seen before, because I, I enjoy that. Um, you can do this kind of stuff till it gets to a point where it becomes extremely repetitious, uh, which I'm sure you guys are probably thinking the same thing, because I have done nothing but reels in the last couple of months, um, because I've been finding them so, so regularly. That's a hard word to say, and I don't like using it, but it only makes sense to say it that way. I could say frequent. I'm good with that one. I've been finding them frequently. It's almost as hard to say. Frequently, regularly. Frequently, regularly. I'm getting it out, though. On normal circumstances, I wouldn't be able to do it. If I had another cup of coffee, you'd be surprised how much I would stutter before I got those words out. Anyway, again, I really thank you, Harry. I thank you, Sophia. Appreciate it. Hope everything's going great up there in the wilds of New Mexico. I know you're way out there from town. And, uh, I thank you. I don't know how to thank you enough. I very much appreciate it. Um, we will get that guy out here fishing. We'll get all of these out there fishing. Um, I will catch one fish with that 40th anniversary. Then I'm going to clean that up. And I'm not a collector. I use stuff. But that one is so pretty that I, I really don't want to mess it up.
I thank you very much. Hope you guys enjoyed this video, guys. All of you out there that I've met and people like like Harry and Sophia and Dan and Ben and Gary and Brian and Tim Hahn and all of you guys, everybody that I've met have been great people, really. The fishing community is pretty cool, especially when you're dealing with the vintage fishing community. And those guys who appreciate the vintage but don't really use it, I understand. It's okay. I do it because I'm poor and broke and cheap. Anyway, thank you guys for watching. I appreciate you all. We'll see you on the next one. Eh, whatever the next one may be. It could be this. i got a couple down here that I got the other day that you guys haven't seen yet and I haven't worked on on the channel. So, not that I've worked on one of these, I, I, don't, I don't even know what this is other than a country mile. Now, I'm making a sandwich because I'm hungry. Boo, you hungry? It's almost lunchtime.